In this video, I'm going to give an update on the mine shaft that I've got outside my front door. So, welcome to Mad Scientist Prospecting and 2019. In the uh, one of the last videos I did last year was about how I suspect I've discovered a mine shaft outside my front door, and this is a very quick update on that. Now, there's been a bunch of comments uh, on that video and quite a few people suggesting that it's really unlikely that it's a mine shaft. Now some people have been suggesting that it could be the old long drop, the, you know, the outside toilet. Now this block here used to be three quarters of an acre and the remains of the original house are incorporated into the house in which we live. It doesn't look like it because it's got modern cladding on and so on on it, but the front section is an old, is apparently is part of an old miners cottage. So it's highly unlikely that the outside loo, the long drop, would have been placed next to the front door. It's much, much more likely that it was down the back aways. Similarly, other people have been saying that it's an old septic system. Well, again, if you look at sort of the lay of the house behind my, my press there, it's sloping down this way. And so the most logical place for the septic system to be would be over on this side of the house on the downhill side. Now the possibility that I forgot to mention was that it could be the remains of a well. Uh, it's been suggested by a number of people. But again, unlikely. Some of the old, old houses in Bendigo do have their own wells, but that was a relatively rare thing. And two reasons for that. One is that Bendigo is quite a low rainfall area. Uh, so the wells wouldn't wouldn't fill up with water because there just wasn't much rain. Uh, there's springs in this area. Uh, well, there isn't any, but <laughs> pretty much. And for the groundwater, well, you could get the groundwater. There's heaps of groundwater, and it would come out of the mines. And some of the water out of some of the mines was actually okay. Um, a lot of it only seemed okay, and there was some long-term chronic health effects from that. Whereas others of it was definitely, definitely not okay. Could also be some sort of animal hole. Again, that's unlikely because... <laughs> because of the bedrock that's poking up above, poking up and showing its head in all the surrounding areas. Uh, some people have suggested a natural cave system. Well, not here. The geology doesn't lend itself to natural cave systems here. Which leaves three likely possibilities. And one is a cellar. But my experience with cellars is that you only tend to see them, you know, they only tend to still be there when the ruin is more or less intact. And by intact, I'm not talking about a habitable dwelling or a building, I'm talking about it's still a visible ruin. When you've got a flattened site, what tends to happen is that all the rubble from the ruin gets all dumped into the cellar and it gets filled in, not covered over. And that's important because if it's filled in, it's not going to give that hollow sound that we were getting when I was um, you know, thumping the ground. Another possibility is that it could be a cache. You know, back in the day when banks weren't trusted that much, people hid their valuables and they would have places to do that. A relatively small hole, which I've just happened to hit the top of, covered up by some sort of, of, of semi-permanent covering for sort of long-term storage that's then been forgotten, that's not unreasonable. I'm not sure how likely it is, but it's not unreasonable. The most likely thing though, is that it is a mine shaft. Now, a bunch of people have been saying that it's highly unlikely that it's a mine shaft, but I think the only reason they're saying that is they really don't understand where I live. Which is in Bendigo, in the Golden Triangle of Victoria, one of the largest, most productive gold fields in the world. Which leaves us with the most likely possibility that it's a mine shaft. But to really explain just how likely that is, over there, on the other side of the railway line, we have a huge area of mine waste. That was a big alluvial field, plus a whole stack of hard rock mining that started up there on the ridge and went through over this way. That area of hard rock mining continues across the road and then up behind these houses. In fact, if you look in through there, you see that muller keep up there? Ooh. So as I was saying, it continues across the road through here and goes up that way. 
you can see from the uh, the Geovic screenshot just how many historical mine shafts there are here. But that's just the recorded mine shafts. We know there was a stack of unrecorded shafts. One of them used to be on the house block when it was a three quarter acre block. Now that it's only a one quarter acre block, it's on my neighbor's property. And that means that not only is it not only is it not, not unlikely that it's a mine shaft, it means it actually is highly likely. Not every property in Bendigo has a mine shaft underneath their house, but an awful lot of them do. And often in the Golden Triangle, whether it be you know, Ballarat, Bendigo, Maryborough, or somewhere in between, about one to two weeks after heavy rain, there's a report in the newspaper that someone has lost their car because it fell into a mine shaft when their driveway opened up <laughs> or their house is suddenly sort of leaning to one side because of a mine shaft or something like they you know there was a report a, a year or so ago lady walked out a front door and her concrete footpath was spanning across a mine shaft <laughs> from her front door to the, to the road there's this chasm underneath the footpath now that all means we've got to be very careful and I'm going to be talking with some professionals and some not so professionals about how best to proceed but either way no matter what I'm, we're going to do with it it's got to be investigated it's got to be checked out because even if all we're going to do is recap that shaft it's got to be done and it's going to be done well. Uh, so stay tuned for further updates uh, and if you don't want to miss out on those make sure you hit the subscribe button the bell notification getting this feature for want of a better term at this point of view is a high high priority dealing with it as a mine though is something I'm probably keen to do but I'm, uh, I've got to proceed with caution and time which means there's going to be the occasional update on what I'm doing on this channel but mostly I'm going to be focusing on my fluid dynamics um, videos and just getting out and having some fun finding gold in the creeks and so on around here. So stay tuned and I'll catch you later.